just going look in, a, in, the, in this is general area um and it, you guys I, i'll go ahead and tell you straight up i fish with a trolling motor a lot of guys i've noticed that that slow pitch jig some of the more popular guys that, that sell jigs and things I, I noticed there's not a trolling motor on their boat and of course that's all a matter of opinion on how you like to fish and i'm still going to be able to drift i'm just going to use my trolling motor to do it so i can control my boat by turning left or right of course number one number two i can control my speed and since i love to slow pitch jig and just jig in general i need to stay up and down i need to stay vertical and i can stay vertical by working that trolling motor and getting my boat just like i want it uh, with that trolling motor usually on speeds two to six working against the tide or wind whatever the situation i can get that boat where i want it and get the speed going that i want against the current we'll still be drifting backward right with the current but but just barely so we're still covering the ground we need to cover but we're able to stay vertical with everything we're fishing with from the jigs to uh, whatever it may be the live baits whatever it is um, and if I wanted to fish live baits flat line, I'd, I'd, I'd bump up the speed a little more to hold her a little better against the tide so those baits could get back, you know, behind the boat into the current. But if we're just jigging, I want to stay up and down, we call it, the vertical. We don't want to get scoped out left or right of vertical. You get 35, 45 degrees, you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not pitching that jig anymore. So you're, just, you're just wasting time. So if the current's too strong or that kind of thing's happened, you just either got to go up heavier in jigs or call it a day. Usually I'm going up heavier in jigs or I'm switching to a cut better live bait at that point. But I'm going to try to jig as much as I can. So back to the video again. So look right in here. We're not quite at Rubens, but still, we're just north of PE, um, the, the, the inlet at PE where it comes out. Okay. You see this ledge right here? This is, I know this is kind of rudimentary, guys. But okay, there's a ledge. So what, right? Yeah, here's what I like about this. And I'm putting the cross here on what I want you to see. Now you look right there where I'm tapping on that. Look where that, that bullseye is in the center of that cross here. There's a mound there coming off of this ledge. That's two, two different types of bait attractors that I want to see. And the current runs across this. So you've got a couple things going on here that, that, that provides you a good opportunity to catch some fish along this ledge. So I'd like to double it up. So we're not just fishing the ledge. We also have the structure here. Use my bullseye as, as reference. Don't mind my screen touches. Just look at the bullseye. So, so that, again, and then fishing. I'd probably want to anchor my boat, which is trolling motor, of course. Again, is right in here. Now, I'd work the ledge probably first. I'd start chumming really heavy. I want to fish this probably... Uh, let's just say let's just say the tide's coming in okay let's say we actually have some tide moving toward the hill toward the beach Let me get back up here and um we're in and, and the chum will be falling back toward that mound now if i wanted that chum to fall let's say we got a knot and a half let's just use a scenario we've got a knot and a half and, and it's moving let's say the current's moving toward the beach let's say there's no gulf, gulf stream influence no matter where we're at let's just take the gulf stream out of it for a second shallow water reef fishing okay for, for, for this portion of the video so I'd want to get up in here about where you see the crosshairs that's where I'd want to get so I'd put the trolling motor on there and at first I would I would get that trolling motor I would get that trolling motor where it would completely stop me to get get my chum going first you know I started seeing bait in my spread um, I, I'd know that you know my chum's starting to be efficient we're starting to get something going and then I may drop some sand balls and some, you know, some oatmeal, some menhaden oil mixed in with that, and maybe even some whole baits. I just it would depend. But I'd want to get my chum going really good first. Then I'm going to start slow pitching. I'm probably going to slow pitch the whole time, anyways, before I get started uh, chumming. So you'd want it to go back toward the ledge, and then, of course, this mound. You'd have stuff sneaking up against this mound, wondering what all this good smell of stuff is and this bit sufficient in the water um this again this is fish a little this is kind of heavy fish as you guys know down there um but again this area is just for reference i'm just using some some areas that i've fished and i know to 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 go over this with you guys and um because I, I i never paid attention to this piece of structure here or this mound here and i didn't dive so i don't know exactly what that is but i know that it holds fish because 
we fish between there, that ledge, and that little piece of structure and have caught fish all along it. Okay, so that's, that's one factor to do is find a couple of things. And if you go up here, this is a long time ago, but the second thing we did, we fished the edge of this, this little ditch here, started here and fished back into that cut. See that? So I like to have something that has a couple, if I can, a couple of different scenarios that, that may hold fish. You see how that is? And then pretty much if you just if you stuck to stuck to a couple of areas the whole day and, and just stay still and keep chumming, the more you chum, the more they will come. And I can tell you from experience, especially especially in South Florida, and it really applies anywhere, the more you chum, if if you don't get, you know, the shark tournament going on behind your boat, you're gonna have sharks now and then no matter what. And I may move, but if it's not terrible, I want to keep chumming because there's other fish down below those sharks that I want. Of course, they're waiting on it when you come up, but that's the way it's fishing is, man, you know? And I want to get I want to get two chum blocks out, I'm, uh, always. No, I don't care what's happening. I'm going to put two out. So we're going to get sharked out, okay, or we're going to, we're going to produce fish, one of the two or both. But I'd rather put the time in and spend the, the, the $12 for the chum and put my time in on that spot because the more you chum the more they'll come and that creates that ecosystem right behind your boat and as soon as you quit it's completely everywhere 